Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about the latest Jurassic Park installment, which is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. This is the fifth installment in the Jurassic Park franchise. Um, this film is directed by J.A. Bayana, who worked on films like A Monster Calls, um, The Impossible with Naomi Watts, and he also directed The Orphanage, I think it was. So he's done a couple of films. Um, I would say A Monster Calls, as far as the films I've seen of his work, was probably one of the more notable ones I've seen of him. But he was hired to work on the latest Jurassic Park installment. Colin Trevorrow, who worked on Jurassic World, the previous Jurassic Park movie, uh, came back as a co-writer and producer of this movie, so he didn't direct this one. Uh, so J.A. Bayana was given the directing duties in hopes to kind of breathe new air into the franchise with a new director, provide a new vision. So basically, they, they went the route of what Mission Impossible has been doing the, since the beginning, where for each installment, you find a new director, find a new vision, find a fresh breath of air. Um, at least I think that was the hope they were trying to get with this latest Jurassic Park film. So in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the latest Jurassic Park film, uh, this film is about um, Owen Grady and Claire from the previous Jurassic World movie. And um, they're called back into action after I think Owen basically found a construction job and Claire found some type of an independent computer business job thing that she's been working at since the events of the previous Jurassic Park movie. And so basically the two of them are called back into action when they find out that there's a volcano about to erupt on the island where Jurassic World was built. And um, there's this owner that um, has a big, basically has a wealthy background, has worked with uh, Professor Hammond, uh, who created the original Jurassic Park in the very first Jurassic Park movie. Um, there's a man that who was working with him way, way back in the day, who's kind of on his deathbed but has children and grandchildren that are kind of trying to keep the idea of Jurassic Park alive and keeping the dinosaurs alive. So they send Owen and Claire back to where Jurassic World was in hopes that they can bring some dinosaurs back to the real world before the islands... Um, before this island basically gets destroyed through this volcano and its magma and so forth. Um, but when they get back, when the dinosaurs are in captivity, when they're brought to this big mansion that this person owns, um, they find out that the dinosaurs are being auctioned off to certain kinds of military, whether it's American military, Russian military, Chinese military, um, any type of military force are trying to basically buy these dinosaurs to kind of better benefit their needs for if the war is ever forever if the world is ever at war again, so basically like another World War III, if such a thing were to happen. Uh, so basically they're trying to use these dinosaurs for military purposes, something that was kind of briefly explored with Vincent D'Onofrio's character in the previous Jurassic Park film, so they explore it more in this one. Um, and so Owen and Claire and a new little girl, I think her name is Macy, um, as well as a character played by Justice Smith and a young girl that's been working with Claire at this computer company. Um, they basically all team up to try to make sure that these dinosaurs are being preserved in the right way, that they're not being sent off to the military. And while all this is going on, they have to be careful of the Indoraptor, at least that's, I think, what the new dinosaur is called, um, that's also being auctioned off at this auction. And if that dinosaur ever gets loose from its cage, some really horrible things could happen. So overall, guys, I liked Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I wasn't completely in love with it. I am going to be honest with you straight up here. Um, I think this is the weakest Jurassic Park movie we've had yet. Um, and that's really kind of saying a lot because there's a lot of things in, Lost, in the Lost World Jurassic Park I didn't care for. Um, I know a lot of people didn't care for Jurassic Park 3. I liked it a little bit more than maybe the average viewer for that movie. And I did like Jurassic World quite a bit, the previous one by Colin Trevorrow. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, not the best Jurassic Park movie ever made, but I thought Colin Trevorrow at least had just enough of the right new vision for Jurassic Park to kind of make it feel fresh and new again. Uh, I was hoping for the same result with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom since they hired J.A. Bianna. And like I said, I did like A Monster Calls. Wasn't manly in love with it, but I thought it had just enough of a fresh take and just enough of a fresh new vision for a director that maybe that could breathe new life into Jurassic Park. Um, and that didn't completely fail, but that didn't completely turn this film around to make it another great Jurassic Park film in the league of some of the better Jurassic Parks we've had previously. Um, but like I said, not a terrible movie, just... There's a lot of things about it that I feel like I need to talk about because I think there's a, things about this movie that work and things about this movie that don't work. So let's go over some of those things. So for my positives of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I thought Owen and Claire's friendship slash relationship uh, was continued in just the right way. It really did feel interesting. Um, 
the things that I liked about the two of them in the previous Jurassic Park film was continued here. Um, you could definitely tell there's kind of a friendship and relationship bondage between the two of them. So the film kind of plays off of that a little bit of kind of the both the romantic side and the friendship side of kind of how they view each other. So they continued that in a very fun way, I guess. Um, and like I said, I, I apologize if I'm getting the, the name of this little girl wrong, but I think her name is Macy. Uh, really fun, interesting character in this movie. Kind of like Claire and Owen. She wants the best for these dinosaurs that were brought to this mansion. Um, she's just trying to save and preserve the right things. Um, she doesn't want these dinosaurs to be sent off to the military. You really kind of feel for her, um, even though she's related to, to somebody who wants to do bad things with these dinosaurs. You really kind of root for Macy. You want her to succeed along with Owen and Claire, making sure that these dinosaurs are preserved and not sent off in the wrong way. Uh, that destroying Jurassic World from this volcano wasn't done, you know, as a tragedy. That, you know, keeping these dinosaurs around is happening for a reason. So I do like how this little girl made things interesting and fun and probably one of the more fun child characters in a Jurassic Park film, probably since the little boy in the very first Jurassic Park movie. Not to say that the kids that were using Jurassic World, the previous one, were that were bad. I just thought this this little girl was much more interesting than some of the other child characters from some of the previous Jurassic Park movies. And one of the better things that happened with J.A. Banna as a director for this movie is the attempted contained horror thriller approach they added to this movie. There's a lot of scenes where the lights are out, the dinosaurs are loose, and, you know, Owen and Claire and Macy have to be careful of some of these dinosaurs that could, could jump out at any moment and attack them. Um, so I do like the attempt at a contained horror thriller. Um, I like that approach to this movie. So that was one of the more fresh elements they brought to the movie they could have done more i felt but that is one of the things that jay abiana brought to this movie that i thought was pretty fresh for the most part there's also some neat dinosaur moments in this so i was right it was called the indoraptor i had i even took note of that here uh so the moments with the indoraptor i thought were really cool uh probably a neater new dinosaur in jurassic park in quite a while because i know the third film on out keeps introducing us to new big dinosaurs that are clearly probably fictional but uh i do thought the indoraptor was a cool new dinosaur they introduced in this movie um and like i said there's just a ton of neat dinosaur moments involving the indoraptor in this movie too um, I also like the dinosaur awe moments, specifically when new characters to the franchise are introduced to dinosaurs, when they're brought to Jurassic World before it explodes. Um, they kind of see dinosaurs for the first time. You know, they clearly weren't there when Jurassic World was around, uh, but now they're seeing it before the island's kind of gone for good. Um, so I do like how the film kind of brings us back to those moments from the earlier Jurassic Park films for when a new, uh, new character sees a dinosaur for the first time and it does kind of bring back those nostalgia moments a little bit for me, too. I also thought B.D. Wong's character was brought back in the right way. Maybe not the most interesting way, uh, but I do like how kind of his tragedy with this movie is, you know, he created a lot of these dinosaurs, kind of like Owen. He's kind of trained them and supervised them over the years. So it's, it's kind of heartbreaking for him to kind of see these dinosaurs being auctioned off, specifically dinosaurs he feels... Uh, aren't really ready to be handed off to people who really don't know what they're doing with the dinosaurs yet. So I kind of liked his angle of the story. He wasn't completely the bad guy. He wasn't completely the good guy, but there was just enough about him where I was kind of glad they brought him back in an interesting way. But for my negatives of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, for the most part, this movie is pretty predictable. I really wasn't surprised or shocked by any plot twist or story point they were trying to make. Everything... I, I kind of expected from it, you know, everything from how the opening played out, from where they were going to go with the dinosaurs, from where things were probably going to go after the the island exploded and everything goes to this mansion. Um, I just, it, it felt pretty predictable. There was nothing really too shocking about the movie. I kind of saw everything coming with this movie. I also thought the overall villain of this film was very lame and boring. There's more than one villain. All of them are very lame and boring, to be honest. All of them basically just want money. They have no heart. They don't really care about the dinosaurs. They just care about the money they're going to make off these dinosaurs. I really never buy any of these villains in this movie. Um, even the actor who played Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs has a role in this movie. I really didn't care about him at all either. 
Um, even though Ian Malcolm is in this movie, you know, Jeff Goldblum's character from the first two Jurassic Park films, we really don't see him that much. It feels more like a cameo appearance, which I kind of got the impression of from the trailers, because really all we see him in the trailers is in these courtroom trials, and really that's kind of really all you really see of him in the movie, too. Um, and that's really too bad. I feel like if you're going to bring Ian Malcolm back to the franchise, you have to do something interesting with him. You think you can find a way to bring him back to the island. You think you can find a way for him to team up with Owen and Claire to kind of share his side of things and better things for them and stuff like that. So I think there's things they could have done with his character rather than just showing up to a courtroom trial, voicing his opinion about dinosaurs, and just kind of exiting the movie from there. I think they could have done more with him than just that. I also felt more time was needed at the actual park. Um, we really don't get a lot of time spent at Jurassic World this time. It really is more so at this big mansion where they're being auctioned off. Um, I personally would have liked more time at the park. There's fun little moments like, you know, Owen trying to watch out for the magma and watching out for the dinosaurs that are clearly trying to hurt him rather than making a bonding friendship like he had with the raptors in the previous Jurassic Park movie. I just thought more time was needed at the park. I was having more fun with the movie when it was there. And when the movie left that area, I kind of didn't have as much fun as a result. For the most part, this film is very bloodless and censored. It's probably the least violent Jurassic Park movie ever made. When a character's arm gets ripped off, when somebody gets bitten by a dinosaur, it feels very G-rated, to be honest. It just feels like, hey, they got bitten, let's move on. Yeah, there's no blood, they just got bitten, and that, that's kind of it. Uh, it just kind of felt very censored and bloodless. I felt like I was kind of watching something that was made for TV that was trying to get the TVG rating. It just felt so G-rated and clean at, at, to the point where I didn't feel like I was watching a Jurassic Park movie. You know, they're, they're PG-13 movies. I get it. You can't really make an R-rated Jurassic Park movie to make to get the, the, the box office money that you want and everything, but make it PG-13. If your movie's going to be PG-13, make it PG-13. If a character gets bitten... Feel free to show some blood. The previous Jurassic Park movie just did it. Why couldn't this one do it? Um, I also felt overall this this film just needed more fresh material. And I, I would say for the overall franchise at this point, if they do go ahead and make another Jurassic Park, which it sounds like they're going to, um, find more fresh material. Whether that means finding another new director that really has something fresh to say about Jurassic Park or... Um, kind of doing what they did with the contained horror thriller elements in this movie. Find ways to kind of really bring that to light and really embrace that and really bring something new. Do something interesting with the dinosaurs. Don't just make it take place at Jurassic Park again. Don't just make it, you know, don't make the overall story of the lost world happen again. You know, do something more fresh and interesting for next time around and hopefully the, the franchise will go back in the right direction again. So, 8 out of 10 for me. I like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but I would say just rent this one. Um, I really can't send you out to the theater to see this one. I would say if you really, really want to see it, wait for that $1 or $2 Redbox rental to come out. I feel it would be more worthy of your money that way than seeing it in a theater. So, 8 out of 10 for me. I like this movie. I just wasn't madly in love with it.